Hello and welcome to the video. This is just a quick video to collect my thoughts and talk about my hopes for HDFPV in 2026. Now I have two of the systems that I'm probably the most excited about, new systems anyway, that are going to become, I think, more mainstream in the next 12 months. This on the right hand side here, or not sure which way round it is with the camera, but this one here is the Cadix Ascent system, uh, part of the Protoss all-in-one and has come out now with its own little HD VTX light unit that you can put in other stuff. So you can buy your all-in-one kit, get your goggles, get your radio, and then potentially move on to add that technology to other stuff, cars, boats, planes, quads, wings, whatever it is. This, however, is something that's just come in. Now, I'm going to do a proper review on this. This is the goggle set from the new Beta FPV Aquila 20. Now, I looked at the analog one a couple of weeks ago. I was kind of aware the HD one was coming, but I was under NDA. The HD system is out, and I've got it here. I'm currently playing with it. I want to give it a little bit longer before I actually make some videos on this. This is using a new HD FPV system. And these are now potentially going to offer pilots an option for those who want to try HDFPV, but they don't want to spend a fortune. Now, when HDFPV became a commercial reality, when DJI kind of showed everybody that the four minute mile was possible, the goggles were $600.00. Air units were about $140. Lots and lots of people, including myself, kind of jumped on that and was just blown away by the change in the picture, analog versus even that version one system. And that has been the case for a while now. Over the last couple of years, we've obviously had the Walksnail system come out. We've had some of the other projects growing up, things like Ruby and also Open are, are now kind of more accessible. We've had other systems like T3 and others come out as well. And I've done videos on all that stuff. A lot of it either requires you to do a lot of heavy lifting yourself, flashing of components, programming of bits, reaching for the soldering iron, which the vast majority of people that I speak to don't want to be interested at all. They just want something that's going to work or it was expensive and you kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And for lots of people, it isn't the cost of the VTXs that is the prohibitive factor, although that's part of it, right? It's actually the cost of the goggles and the VTX units themselves. Because if you have 10 models, maybe you've got a couple of quads, some wings, some planes, you want to add HDFPV. If you have 10 models, if it's $150 per model, that's one and a half thousand dollars just to put the HD system in that. I know lots of us, when we first started out, tried to make it so you could move the VTX unit from model to model and try and save some cash. So it's, although the goggles have come down a lot recently, so things like the Ascent system and the new Beta FPV system, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Uh, uh, the goggles are a lot cheaper. It's the fact that the airside units you know, with the Ascent system, it's $36 for the VTX Lite, but I think we're going to see some changes. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then, you know, you kind of can get into the system if you're a brand new beginner by buying the all-in-ones that these things come from. So this is the little quad that's part of the Protoss system from Cadix and Walksnell using Ascent. This is the quad from the Aquila 20 HD system. Uh, these are very different flying models, actually. Uh, this is very much aimed at the beginner. It kind of flies itself almost. I had a look at the analog one and loved it. And the fact it's now available in HD is just really good. It's just really interesting, the HD system they've gone for. So let's talk about the two HD systems. What are they for those of you that may have not spotted that stuff over the last month or two? So the first one is that Walksnail Ascent system that initially came out as part of this. This is the Protoss all-in-one kit. Um, I definitely think that Cadix and Walksnail buried the lead on this. Uh, this came out. It's a really nice little all-in-one kit. Uh, the quad's not particularly powerful. It's aimed at beginners. Let's be honest. It's not aimed at the people who watch a lot of my videos who already have an HDX radio, uh, HD FPV system, you know, all those different pieces. It means that somebody who just wants to try it out can kind of get their toe in the water. Uh, but they didn't really make a big deal of the fact that it was a brand new HD FPV system. And that 
for me, was them definitely burying the lead. However, they've now brought out things like the Ascent Lite VTX. The performance of this is actually really good. So this now means that with the Ascent Lite VTX, you can actually, with the goggles that you get either through the Protoss kit or separately, because the goggles aren't expensive either, and I actually really like these goggles. Um, I have... Uh, a couple of these. These are very similar to the Walksnail Goggle Ls. I use them for my own head tracking rigs. Um, they fit my face really well and they work fine. It's got FPV recording inside. It's very easy to use. You can kind of squeeze your glasses in if you really have to, but they do offer sight correction as well. The only thing that I think most of us were disappointed in was that this system is not compatible with the um, Walksnail system that they've had out for a couple of years now. I kind of understand that, as I've said before, from a marketing point of view. But from a person who's invested in the Walksnail point of view, it's kind of like, oh, God, have I really got to buy another pair of goggles? That's kind of the reality of it. The only other downside with this currently, note the word currently, is that this has a limited range. Uh, this is the VTX Lite. And when I first looked at this, I wasn't aware of anything that was happening. So I kind of speculated on what was coming. Uh, I think the good news is, is do make sure you're subscribed because there is a lot of new stuff happening around this. Walksnail are investing heavily in the Ascent system and will build it out into something that's going to be very, very interesting for lots of pilots. This again is a three kilometer maximum range. I know what People have done long ranges with the scent. Would I push it that far? Not in the flying that I do here. Definitely not. One, because it's not legal. But two, I would hate to lose a model. That's why I have GPS return to home on all of the models that I fly here with HGFPV stuff. However, if it's a £36 VTX unit versus a £150 VTX unit, it still will hurt if I lose that model, but it's not going to hurt as much. But... If they can increase um, the power, give us a little bit more range for those of us that were safe and legal to do so, then that will kind of take away one of the big criticisms of the Ascent system. And I personally don't think we're going to have to wait that long for that to happen. And when it does, I'll talk about it on the channel. The other system is part of this thing here. Again, this is the Beta FPV Aquila 20 HDFPV system. This is using the Art Links HDFPV system, which delivers 1080p at 60 frames a second. Again, the latency is a little bit higher for those of you that want to fly really close to things in a quad, it's 60 milliseconds, but actually for normal hobby flying or fixed wing flying, or even cars or boats or anything else that you'd want to put it on, 60 milliseconds is absolutely fine. They're talking about the range of this system being about 400 meters, and the goggles that you get as part of the new kit are that kind of glass-friendly design again, which lets you uh, record that HD stuff in the goggles using the HD stuff. Now this P1 HD VTX system inside the Aquila 20 HD can go up to 200 milliwatts. The picture is very nice actually. There's um, a little bit of smearing or muddying of the grass and fine detail in the way that things like the uh, a new Ascent system from Worksnail don't do, but actually feels and looks to me very similar to some of the early Worksnail versions of firmware that they had. Penetration is actually really nice as well, flying it around behind stuff like the new Ascent system. It's, they seem to have got much better at how to handle that. The way it degrades is very, very similar to things like analog. So you get a little bit of warning that you are starting to push it and that you need to kind of turn back and head back for the home location. Now, for lots of people, they'll look at that and go, oh, hang on a minute, only, you know, half a kilometre of range, 60 milliseconds is a too much latency. Well, you know what? That's probably means that this system at the moment is probably not going to be for you. But I think for lots of hobby grade pilots who are looking to get into HDFPV, you know what? They won't really care about that stuff. And they're not going to fly further than that anyway with a small quad that's edge of line of sight, which is legal in most places. And the fact that it's 60 milliseconds, if you're learning to fly, you know what? It doesn't really matter because you tend to have lots of aids turned on, things like quads and wings that are going to make it easier to fly anyway, flying in essentially angle mode. 
I will do a more in-depth review of the Aquilia 20 when I've got a little bit more flying on it. And lots of people have kind of uh, rushed to get their videos out on it because it's a new exciting thing. I would like to spend a little bit more time in it before I make my full review video. So it looks like 2026 is going to be an interesting year for cheaper HDFPV. We have the ArtLink system, which Beta FPV are getting behind and putting inside their stuff. And with the very recent announcement that the P1 HD VTX is going to be offered separately for $38. And the HD goggles that I have here, the V. Or 04 HD goggles are going to be available for $149 means that this again similar to the CADIC system is one potentially that you can invest in and you can start to grow as you want to add it to additional models and additional vehicles but also we have the walks now ascent system as well which has already taken its first steps into really upsetting the Apple cart with some of the more traditional HD FPV vendors the exciting thing is with these kind of lower price points, it does put a lot of pressure on people like DJI and others and even people like Walks now themselves to create a real differentiation between these kind of systems aimed at the hobbyists and also the professional systems. I do air quotes if my hands were free, which is what now the Walks now system is aimed at stay tuned i will try and track what's going on with these and as the new components for things like ascent come out i'll try and get them in and we can talk about them but also now beta fpv is behind the art link system it's going to be interesting to see how that grows as well stay tuned it's going to be an interesting year for hd fpv Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.